Is this video a banger? Counter Strike's hidden speedrunning communities. It sounds like a banger. For the uninformed, this. It's a banger. We'll give it a shot, bro. Let's see it. Reps the surf. He had some crazy bangers before. So big potential. Let's go. For the uninformed, this is the only CSGO. An enormous community that's about to receive one of its biggest updates ever. But in its shadow. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. A whole other game that few CS players really understand. These speedrunning empires were hidden within the game's community tab, and despite having thousands of maps and millions of players over the past two decades, there's still some games that you've likely never seen before that appear to push the limits of the Source engine. Okay. These are the speedrunning communities of Counter-Strike, and we have to start in Quake. The first game on record to feature bunny hopping, a mechanic where players could maintain their velocity by jumping when they hit the ground and gain even more speed by turning in the air. While this would eventually become B-Hop, one of the largest CSB running communities with essentially the same rules, that's not why we're here. In 2012, a scantily watched video was released called Slide Challenge 2004. In it, a player named Kovac, yes, the same Kovac that made the famous aim trainer, is described as finding what? the fastest way to accelerate in Quake history. And you might be able to tell this was the first ever instance of surf nah. in gaming. Players could hold themselves against huge ramps, moving without friction and gaining massive speed from gravity. But Kovac clarified in a Reddit post, he didn't invent surf, but moved maps from a different mode called slide mod, discovering that the mechanic worked on normal settings. It wasn't until another Reddit post, two years later, that Mario, the creator of Counter-Strike Surf, would reveal himself. You might Bro, holy! That's a statement. I invented Counter-Strike Surf Fifths. Holy! The creator okay. of Counter-Strike Surf would reveal himself. Jesus. You might have seen an amazing video about Mario and by Three Clicks Philip. I simply couldn't do it justice. Legend. But this is Surf the Gap, the original Surf map that would give way to thousands more over the next two decades. While most surf maps were originally made for combat, small arenas, they would eventually shift their focus to speedrunning, traveling from the start zone of the map to the end zone as fast as combat. A lot of people don't know. The game mode surf combat, it looks fun as hell. I saw Dima, a friend of mine, played it on, uh, on stream. You have surf ramps, you have an RVP or something, and you have 100% accuracy, you can like shoot everybody, everybody is surfing. If you fall off, don't act like, oh my god, but what if I'm bad at surfing? No, you just spawn again in the air and you, you know, can, can take another ramp. It looks, it's crazy. It looks like so much fun, you should check it out. It's possible, evolving as mappers became more skilled and engines more developed. You should check it out, I've never played it on stream. I've never played it, oh shit. Until the modern maps of today, and Surf began to take on a certain oh, reputation. Being impossible. Surf was difficult and sometimes unintuitive. New players would often be unable to get past their first ramp. But this created a lure and prestige around surfers that could not only beat maps, but do it at record speed. Surf would become the most popular CS speedrunning game, exploding into popular culture. Streamers like Summit1G, and unfortunately the YouTube phenom Leafy would make Surf a classic. And easily recognizable in the wider gaming market but still inevitably tied to bunny hop. B hop movement mechanics are almost identical Bro, to by surf. the way, one thing. Bro, I, I, back in the day, I, like, I wasn't good at surfing. I never surfed myself, but I watched some leafy videos here and there. We all did, right? Bro, he kept on surfing throughout all of his videos, but he's so bad. How after hours and hours of surfing? I, bro, he's so bad at surfing. I rewatched some at one point. And it's, it's terrible. <laughs> In fact, B-Hop features a lot of- He's not learning. Or he's like using the, the material from like, I don't know, same, same week always or something. I don't know. Surfing his maps. But the central focus of B-Hop is distinct. Rather than gaining speed from gravity by falling down, B-Hoppers must air strafe back and forth. Strafing as a technique takes thousands of hours to perfect. And some B-Hoppers only play maps where you strafe in a straight line, fighting over really tiny advantages. On the other hand, is a greater breadth of B-Hop maps. Huge courses that give you many options for your route. Most require you to aim for viable spots to land, often boxes, but sometimes smaller pillars, or even tiny pinpoints that are very difficult to hit. 
this variability can lead to some pretty insane looking movement and tons of options for map creation. Dhop2 found wide reception in a different way. A legendary video called Foon Too Much for Z Block. In it, Foon flies past his opponents, using B-Hop to get to critical points earlier than he should. The idea that B-Hop could be used to gain a massive competitive advantage was enthralling for a lot of players. And I think the angered reactions of Foon's opponents contributed a lot to this mystique, but unfortunately, these movement mechanics were eventually nerfed, almost completely in normal Counter-Strike, confining the application oh, of B-Hop nah. to community servers in which there was a major divide. Originally, like in regular Counter-Strike, players would use their scroll wheel to jump. It was the most consistent and legal way to b-hop. This form of b-hopping is called scroll. However, in the early days of b-hop, there were cheaters who would use auto b-hop. They did this because it prevented any speed loss when touching the ground. This gave auto B hoppers an unbeatable advantage, so cheaters could at any time take a world record easily. This resulted in the entire game mode transitioning from scroll hop to auto hop for everyone. This not only divided the community, but increased the pace of bunny hop as a whole. Players could now easily reach high speeds, ripping through maps that would have otherwise taken minutes, resulting in some of the most beautiful and unimaginable runs. B-Hop and Surf are now tied to each other. Top players can, with effort, travel between the two and set records at the highest level, as the basic movement is essentially the same. But the third giant of CSB running employs aspects of both of these games, called Creed's Climbing, created by Creed's. Ah, KZ? Players must scale structures and clear large gaps, a much more vertical game than the others. Oh. <laughs> KZers can only achieve this by strafing. KZ, like B-Hop, rewards Damn. good strafers. But KZ also features both surf ramps and elements of B-Hop, requiring top KZers to understand all three modes. But I think what made KZ so popular was that the skills learned in this game would give a direct competitive advantage in regular CSGO. The hardest and most effective jumps on Mirage. I did that. The hardest and most effective jumps. This, the window jump, did it many times. On so Mirage were nothing. Not for a problem. Crazy players who had honed their movement for years. It's a long jump. Take for example the new impossible b-hop found on Inferno, where you had to jump from this pallet to the window across. While pro players struggled for hours to make it, top KZers easily proved it was possible. <laughs> Bro, the disrespect. Players struggled for hours to make it. Top KZ. There you go. Album. <laughs> he didn't have to add the album. KZers easily. I remember Rob's tried for four hours on stream. Like he did nothing else. He, all he did was try the, the this jump, and he didn't do it. He proved it was possible. Ladders also appear in KZ, as they do in the base game, with different ways to jump and strafe off for the most speed. Very useful for a map like Nuke. However, the KZ community is divided, much like B-Hop, with different versions of the game with their own settings. Between these three, only one perfectly resembles CSGO settings, VNL or Vanilla KZ, with the other two providing quality of life improvements and other changes for speedrunners. Most maps simply aren't made for vanilla settings. And like the other speedrunning communities, KZ has a massive competitive leaderboard and server system with world records that make the Inferno Jump look easy. These three games within a game, despite their dominance, are only the tip of the- Which one do you like the most, Chad? For me, it's easy. I've always been a surf enjoyer. I don't know. It's, I guess, as well, maybe like the easiest to get into, if that makes sense. It's 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 easier to play to 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 do it at a decent level I think, huh? I don't know. <clears throat> and it's just chill, bro. You slap on a video on the left, on the right, you just you just surf. Oh baby. <clears throat> Iceberg. The next few games are the underground of CS speed running. A couple of which I believe have never been covered on YouTube. The hell is this? Starting with Death Run. In the earliest days of Counter-Strike, Death Run was immensely popular. As you attempted to run through the map, your opponents could activate traps, suddenly killing you. This led to a really scary and interesting game, baiting out trap uses or avoiding them entirely. But that's not all these maps were used for, as apparently they were also used for solo speedrunning. 
Death Run maps were converted into Speed Run maps, and players had to weave their way through tiny gaps and scroll hop their way to the end, even having its own cheaters, with one player recording their entire setup from scratch Holy. to prove that they were legit. Apart from the runs online showcasing the maps, there were apparently servers that saved times and leaderboards, one of which I found and is still available on the original Counter-Strike. And surprisingly, yet another community game was secretly converted into speedrunnable maps, the minigames mode. On MG servers, players could essentially be subjected to anything the mapper desired, falling floors, other players, and one subset of these MG maps were called course maps, where everyone raced to the end while avoiding moving objects or other obstacles. And as advertised, these maps were added to timed servers so that they too could be optimized. But what separated MG course maps from B-Hop, for example, was the increased variety of obstacles, especially this. movement of objects within the map. This was never really seen in B-Hop, as it added way too much randomness. But in the very small world of minigames B running, anything goes. I like that. Much more vanilla. I, I like an added part of randomness. Does that make sense, chat? If there's random elements, it's kind of comparable, uh, comparable to Minecraft. You can speed run, you get thrown into a random world seat. You need the perfect seat. It's it's time intensive. You have many tools to like perfect the runs, versus uh, a set a set seat. You know what I mean? I, I I think a little bit of of randomness can be nice. I don't know. I think that sounds cool. And deep is trick surf. The random surf one. is much like regular surf in its mechanics. Ride along ramps and gain speed from gravity. But as opposed to <laughs> gold, gold, gold. Yeah, I like RNG in general, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Linear maps you traverse in a closed arena. Maps that originally would have been used for combat. And to complete your goal, you must perform a trick. Huh? Trick surf is made up of thousands of routes, unique ways to get across the map. Players are evaluated on the time of the tricks, the amount of speed they can generate, and of what? course, how difficult and lengthy of a trick they can do. Tony Hawk? Trick Surf is like the Tony Hawk's underground of uh -huh. CS speedrunning, flair and creativity more rewarding than simply following the world record route. Yet, Trick Surf had an unfortunate downfall. The main Trick Surf servers, run by a player named Z, were suddenly shut down. The website that could normally be used to access the game was now a diatribe against the game itself. Z claimed that Surf was an addictive and destructive force that had to be ended. But fortunately, for those- What? Officially, my reason is that keeping it up is enabling people to waste their lives on a dead, broken game. What? Those people, including me, should play new games. Or better yet, go out into the world. Because wasting even a second on that shit is never going to improve my life or fix my teeth. <laughs> what? This can't be real. Surf cannot provide any happiness. Cannot fix my teeth. Why does he keep repeating? Cannot fight a girlfriend. Cannot do anything except hurt lives of players. Addictive and destructive force that had to be ended. But fortunately, for what those who to play now, the new trick.surf website and servers were recently Not shut up the service and said get a life. <laughs> Holy released for the public to use. There's nah. another very similar speedrunning community I have to mention called Trick Jump. If you've ever seen the game mode called Hide and Seek, where you chase down your opponents using many of the movement techniques we've discussed, then Trick Jump will seem familiar. Much like Trick Surf, you must complete lines, but the ramps are so much smaller, gaps tighter, and with a pace rivaling the hardest surf maps. Despite how small some of these communities may be, they never fail to impress even the most casual observer. But our last community is the future of CS speedrunning. Oh, huh? Tricks. What? Tricks is by Wait, far the most this, no? complex and underrated game mode, featuring elements of Surf, B-Hop, and KZ. And this one critical mechanic, All those flashing. Bots. In tricks, one player throws flashbangs at the other player's feet, yeah, sending no them up. This ain't the future, bro. Hey, you need homies for this. Words and forwards. Repeating this without fail results in a tremendous amount of speed, often leading the flyer into a difficult surf and b hop section. Then, after exiting their solo, cool, the flyer sometimes goes back to their flasher at blazing speed with a perfectly timed flash shooting towards the end zone. Trick's maps emphasize not only cooperation, but trust that the other player will do their part. Take this insane That's end sick. to a map by the player username. Bro, that looks so sick.
Trix maps emphasize not only cooperation, but trust that the other player will do their part. Take this insane end to a map by the player username. After several Damn. minutes of intense play, username had to hit four high-speed flashes in a row, aiming them perfectly at his partner's feet, without which the run cannot be completed. I will say this game mode was covered for the first time recently by Dima Wallhacks, but other than this, uh -huh. Trix has received a little of the attention it deserves. There was one more game mode sent to me, Rocket Should we try this with Arrow? CSGO. But unfortunately, despite how cool it looks, there are no remaining servers for the game. Uh, to play it, you would have to run your own server. No servers, bro, this looks sick. No. How cool it looks, there are no remaining servers for the game. To play it, you would have to run your own server with the proper plugins. This is the unfortunate case for many CSGO communities, dying to the natural course Holy. of the market. And in an age where our game, CSGO, is about to be made obsolete, all of these communities are under threat. <sighs> Many like Surf survive on older games like the most competitive server, KSF, which is about to hold their biggest tournament ever. If you want to catch it live, click the link below on the 12th and 13th of August. My entire channel is devoted to these communities, so now that you've watched this, you'll be able to understand my best video on cheating in Behop. Thank you so much. I, I think Levi won that championship, by the way, right? We watched that. We watched that. Damn. Yeah, Chad, what is going to happen with CS2, bro? All of these mods. Some of these things must be holding, uh, must be running on old mods or like old, whatever you call it, old server setups that people just always look up on the GitHub. That all has to be reworked, no? I think it's a new engine. Some of these things may not even be possible anymore. W video as always. That was nice. That was very, very nice.